Hey, this is Jamie with Stonemaier Games, and today I'm going to talk about my top 10 favorite games with Game Trays. Game Trays specifically is a brand. I think it's becoming one of those brands more like uh, Kleenex for tissues because they create so many great trays, but other companies are doing their own versions of their trays now too, which is fine. I think Noah created something really awesome um, in creating these beautiful inserts for games. I am friends with Noah. Noah lives here in St. Louis. And uh, so this isn't really a biased list. This is my favorite games, but, um, but Noah did chime in. He will have some games on this list as well. And I'm excited to talk about it because a bunch of Stillmeyer Games products have the trays in them, including Wingspan. Wingspan has this tray, which both stores the cards inside the tray, um, but also the lid, when you take it off, becomes a lid that holds the three cards that are kept up in the card display. So you don't have to remember how many cards do I put up face up during the game. The tray tells you there are three of them. And by having it elevated a little bit off the ground, it makes the cards easier to pick up. So you're kind of, have you ever had that happen where the card is flat on the table and you can't like get it off the table? Here you just press down and the card flips up and you get it off the table. So dual use purpose for Wingspan, the game train in Wingspan. Um, what else do we have? We have uh, between two castles. So I have the expansion here. We have the, the tray in both the expansion and the core game. And the tray in the expansion holds this stuff like so. It holds some, some tokens here, holds the tiles. And my favorite thing that I really love about this tray, here's the section over here, and in regards to also the core game, is that the, the tray is designed to hold exactly nine tiles in each of the slots that have this castle token in between. So it's saying that there's a player that will take these tiles. They'll draft, they'll pick up these nine tiles early on in the game, and then midway through the game, they'll pick up these nine tiles. And because the tray holds that exact amount, you don't have to count them. You, you can just in case, but you know the tray holds that exact amount. You can just pick it up. And it also means that the end of the game is really when you're setting up for the next game, because at the end of the game, you kind of just shuffle all the tiles together and put them back in these slots. And then when, you, when, when you're when you ready to start a new game, you just open the trays and begin. It makes setup super, super easy for Between Two Castles. So that's Between Two Castles. The next game that we have on the list, so this is, obviously I'm not giving the top 10 list. These are all the Stillmeyer games that have game trays, is My Little Scythe. My Little Scythe has perhaps the most, or one of the most robust inserts of, all, of any of our games um, that uses game trays. Uh, Noah made this beautiful top layer that holds all the different characters, seven in the core game, or, or seven pairs, and then two more in the expansion. And then there's a bottom layer of trays. I won't flash that to the camera because there isn't a lid on it. It's kind of held in by the board. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's this layer. One cool thing that Noah does, not in this particular game, but he, he, he really thinks about the, the way that space will be used in the game. And I really like in Wasteland Delivery, uh, Wasteland Express Delivery Service, how the lids themselves are used as trays for some components. So like the, the, the uh, well actually the, so there's like a, a tray and then you have a, a, another tray and that tray is the lid for the tray below it. And the lid on top of that tray is also maybe a tray for something else. Really clever use of space. And finally, the last game on the list from Stillmire Games that has a game trays is Euphoria. Uh, the third and fourth printings of Euphoria come with the game trays included. This is definitely part of the game trays story that I'll share in a second. But they're really, really nice trays here that make set up super super easy so this comes with the game when you play euphoria you get you get this tray up here you get these trays you just take them out of the box and you have the resources ready to go and there's a bottom tray that has all the tiles and cards in it uh this is one of my favorite trays that noah has ever made he, i know he worked really 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 hard to bring this this tray to life so those are the Stomar games that use game trays. Now, I, I mentioned to Noah that I was doing this list, and I said, do you have anything you want to add? You want to mention, like, your favorite games that use game trays, things like that? There are over 150 games, I think, at this point, at least listed on BoardGameGeek, that use game trays. And Noah had a few, like, brief stories that he wanted to share. Um, actually, and I minimized the email before I started this video, so let me pull that up. Noah said... Um, Euphoria. Euphoria was first on his list, not as a, as a game in general and not necessarily the trays, but he said it was the second aftermarket tray that he ever did, meaning that we, uh, he, I can't remember actually if I went to him or he went to us, but he made a tray uh, for Euphoria for people who owned Euphoria and wanted a tray for it. That was how the game trays business started. He, he sold individual trays. Um, and then, uh, and, and oh, he mentioned that's how he got to know me as a friend. I guess that's how we met over, over the Euphoria trays. Um, yeah, that's neat, neat for him to share that. And then Mechs versus Minions. 
He said that was the first trait he did that was included inside the box of the game uh, from the start. And he said working with Riot Games was really cool. Then Eclipse, he says he did an aftermarket tray for Eclipse, and then that got the attention of the company that publishes Eclipse, and so he got hired to do the new edition, the trays for the new edition of Eclipse, uh, and he says there's so much stuff integrated into those trays. That's a fairly new release, I believe, the new edition of Eclipse. Dwellings of Eldervale, he mentioned. He said probably the most integrated tray system with the game. And yeah, I, I still haven't played uh, uh, Dwellings yet, but I've heard that the trays that are used in that game are very much integrated into the mechanisms of the game itself. And finally, he mentioned Parks, which will definitely appear on my list later. So I'll show you that tray a little bit later. But he says it's a simple, beautiful tray. And he manages to fit a lot of st stuff into a tight spot. So let me jump into the list itself, my top 10 list. Um, and we will start out with Burger Brothers 2. And now this is the one tray, I actually only have a few of the game. I only own a few of the games on this list. This is Burger Brothers 2. This is a cooperative, um, a cooperative heist game where you're trying to, you, you break into a casino, you, uh, you run around, you gather, you gather clues, you have encounters with people, and you're, you're pretty much trying to determine the location of, um, of two different key rooms that help you there's a there's an office and there's a safe and you need someone in the office and someone in the safe to actually access the safe but you're just moving around and, and kind of optimizing and play this little mini game where you you are avoiding the guards who are always trying to hunt you down really clever sequel to the original burger brothers cooperative game and the tray itself which i can't i'm not going to show you here because taking this box out taking this this bottom part out of the box really opens up the box and make it, makes it hard to put back together but um it's a very clever use of the insert and these these stands that actually elevate it. So it's a two-story heist, and you enter on the ground floor, which is just the table. And this box becomes this three-dimensional thing that stands above that bottom layer and uh, using the trays in the game and uh, becomes a second story of the game, of the, of, the, of the casino that you're breaking into, which I thought was a really, really clever use of game trays. This list, I should say, is mostly a list of my favorite games um, that happen to have game trays, but I am going to be talking about the game trays in them whenever they are applicable to this list as well. So that's number 10, Burger Brothers 2. At number 9 on the list is a game that I no longer own, even though I really do enjoy it, and that is The Grim Forest. The Grim Forest is a, uh, it, it's, I've said it to be one of my favorite Take That games. Um, it's largely like a resource collection game. It is simultaneously you're choosing an action, a, a place that you want to visit. Um, all, all the players are choosing the same thing. And you then go and divide up the resources at that place. But it also has a really clever take that mechanism where you can have a friend, but you can only have one friend in this game at a time. And if you gain a new friend, you can either keep it for yourself or you can give it to another player. And I think maybe even you can give your current friend to another player. I don't remember the exact mechanisms there, but, but it means that if someone else has a really powerful friend, you can take away their friend. You can remove it, essentially, by giving them another friend, but they still have a friend there. So either way, even though it, there's a little bit of direct interaction there, um, a little bit of take that, you, they still end up with something good or something interesting, some, something for them to work on. I really like that element of the game. It has nothing to do with the trays. The trays in the Grim Forest are just really nice resource trays that make it super easy to organize the components and set up the game. If you ever open up the box to Grim Forest, hopefully Joe will show a photo on the screen, but it is a really, really beautiful insert. Um, and that's why Grim Forest is my number nine on this list. And number eight is a game that I thought I owned, but I guess I, I just haven't played many. No, I don't have it over there. Um, I haven't played many party games in the last year, so I think I may have gotten rid of it, but that is When I Dream. I'm looking over at my game shelf over here, or maybe it's on the other shelf, but When I Dream. When I Dream is a really great uh, social game where you close your eyes and you listen to other players give you clues about uh, an image or images that they are looking at. Am I remembering this correctly? Um, yes, your, your eyes are definitely closed and other players are, are talking about an image. Um, but they're only giving one word clues to it and some of them are helping you and some of them aren't helping you and you don't you don't know which is which uh the insert itself is just nice it's just a nice insert i wouldn't say it helps particularly all that much with with setup or cleanup or anything like that but it's a nice insert designed by game trees and it's just a really really fun social game to play with people um because i mean how many times in games do you actually close your eyes that's a pretty rare thing to close your eyes in a game it's led to some some great um 
funny moments playing playing when I dream. And also one of the great parts of the game is that when you open your eyes, you have to recount the dream that you just had. And there's actually a mechanism that goes along with that. If you recount uh, all the different uh, things that you saw in the dream, things that people were telling you, you actually get extra points for doing that. So that's when I dream at number eight. Number seven, I wish I could show you because I own this game, Arch Ravels. But uh, I, I just bar I, I lent it to a friend just a couple days ago. So a friend is borrowing Arch Ravels and I can't show it to you. But Arch Ravels is a really, really solid uh, order fulfillment game. It is a knitting game thematically, a nice knitting game. And during the game, you're, you, you're knitting these things, but also then turning those things that you knit into other things and collections of things to fulfill greater orders. I love the leveling up of the orders in this game, that you can make something and feel good about that, but then you can make a combination of different things and feel even better about that. Uh, and uh, it, just this leveling up of, of orders feels really good. And the insert is beautiful. It's one of Noah's more recent works. And it is, it is a really, really beautiful insert to pull out of that box. Uh, so that is Our Travels at number seven. And number six is another game, actually, that I own, but a friend is borrowing right now. Uh, that is Mechs vs. Minions. This is the one that Noah mentioned as the first game that he did that, uh, that, uh, that where the insert was included in the box itself. And it is a big box and a big insert. Um, there's multiple layers to it. I think there are three layers to this giant tray that you're pulling out of the box and there's multiple trays that you're pulling out uh and there's just a lot of miniatures that it contains and one of the cool things that i think noah does in his game trays is that they're often he creates miniature slots where uh if you have like a a miniature with a sword pointed up this way he'll create a slot that holds that miniature but also if a guy is holding like or, or a, a dwarf is holding an axe over in this direction it holds that uh, thing as well and so the the same slot can fit two different types of miniatures so you're not kind of fumbling through finding the exact slot for each miniature they're they're dual purpose often maybe even more than that in, in the certain cases of other miniatures i think that's really really clever because it's kind of frustrating when you're putting away a game putting away a game and you're trying to find the exact slot for certain miniatures uh, but it's yeah it's a, it's a beautiful insert system in mechs versus minions and also i'm talking more about the insert than the game but i really like mechs versus minions as a chaotic cooperative programming game uh, i think it works really really well and the tutorial in the game is excellent if you want to study how to how to bring how to onboard players into a game study the tutorial in next versus minions it is absolutely brilliant that's why it's my number six goo gong is a, a wonderful game that actually has some uh some some history with red rising it, it wasn't a game that I, I thought of when i was designing red rising but it actually has a very similar mechanism in that on, on your turn you are playing a card from your hand onto the table and wherever you play it you are picking up the card underneath of it so it has this play a card pick up a card mechanism that's somewhat found in red rising as well and gugong however these cards essentially represent bribes in the game you are bribing the person who works at that location or owns that location and uh, with the thing that you're giving them and then you're, you're taking something away from them. And there's also a little mini game associated with that location. So you're not just playing a card. That card means something in terms of how powerful your actions are in that area of the game when you take your turn. Uh, it's a really neat flow of the game. Just play a card, put down a card, play a little mini game in between. And uh, I, the mini games themselves, I think, are really well done as well. But that core mechanism, I think, is excellent. I'd love to see that in more games as well. We might even branch off and do something different with that mechanism with Red Rising in the future. Uh, but that is a Goo Gong, my number five game on this list. And actually, uh, speaking of the game trays, I don't remember the game trays in this game. I know, based on the BGG list, that at least some version of Goo Gong has a game trays in it. I don't actually remember it in the game. So I'm talking about this game purely from a gameplay perspective, not from the game trays perspective. That's Goo Gong at number five. This game definitely, though, I definitely remember how awesome the game trays in it. And that is Dice Throne, specifically the reboot of it and the second season, which is when they started to, to contain each character within its own little game tray. With the idea being that if you wanted to go to a friend's house and play Dice Throne, you don't have to bring the whole giant box. You just pull out a few characters that you want and bring those characters and, go, and you can go play the game. I don't know how many people actually ever use it that way versus bringing multiple characters, but it's a really clever system. I love that when you pull a character out of the box, you're just pulling one insert out and everything is contained in there. The, the, the character mat folds in third, so it folds up into that box. You have their tokens in there, you have their cards, everything fits perfectly. It is a really, really nice implementation of game trays. And Dice Throne in general, I just love the, the different characters. 
Uh, it, it is a it's a, a dueling dice rolling push your luck game. Um, and push your luck games I really really enjoy. And Dice Throne I think does a great job of of wanting making you push your luck and still often getting something from the results even though you may not get exactly what you were hoping to to roll. That's Dice Throne at number four. At number three I can finally show you a visual example. Tidal Blades. Tidal Blades is a wonderful worker placement game with a lot of stuff that I love. I've talked about this game quite a bit on my channel. I recently mentioned it um, at the top of my favorite skill test uh, mechanisms in games. I think there's a wonderful skill test. The worker placement system where you place a worker, you get a special bonus if, if it's on a certain spot. And also, uh, depending on other things that are happening at that location. Um, I love that aspect of the game. And uh, the, the upgrading dice in this game is also really, really cool. Now, I don't have the fanciest version of Tidal Blades, but I do have some of the game trays in this box. Let's see if I can find a place to get them out. Uh, yeah, so I think, I think Noah designed this thing. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but this is a dice rolling stadium. I think Noah designed that. And they're also, these he definitely designed. So these are nice, just nice little resource trays. It can be that simple that it's just a nice little resource tray that, that you plug. Open up the lid and, and you have resources there. And I, I've put, right now I have all my fruit in here, but really I should have the shells on one side and the fruit on the other. And that way, if you have players sitting on opposite sides of the table, you give one side this tray and you give the other side the other tray and you evenly spread out those resources uh, during during setup. I think that's like the, one of the, the best core uses of game trays when you can put the resources in there and easily just spread things out across the table instead of having little piles or little baggies that you're shaking stuff out. The game trace system makes it so much easier to, uh, to to hand out resources at the beginning of the game. So that was number three, Tidal Blades on this list. Number two, In the Hall of the Mountain King. Wonderful game, wonderful mechanisms. One of the more recent games that I that I played, not for the first time, but um, getting back together with friends during the pandemic finally. Uh, playing in the Hall of the Mountain King. We played it. We really, really love that game. I, I love the, the troll smoot mechanism where you, you're building this... Uh, this kind of cascade, this pyramid cascade of trolls where you activate, when you place one down, you activate all the abilities of the trolls beneath that card, directly beneath it, um, and on going down through the cascade. And there's also a really nice polyomino game on the on the board itself. The trays in, uh, in, in the Hall of the Mountain King are used both for resources and to hold a bunch of the tiles, because there are a bunch of polyomino tiles. So it's a it's a really cool tray that holds the different sizes of tiles. And also during the game itself, uh, for storage, it holds these bigger tiles that you can gain when you when you fill in a certain area of the board with with your tiles. There are these tiles that you can put down on top of them. To uh, I think they're called uh, they're like throne room style tiles. I don't know if that's quite the right word for it. But during setup, you can pull those tiles out of the box and kind of wedge them down in this insert so that they're elevated, they're, they're, they're vertical. So you can see how many are left, you can see what's there. It's this really neat feature of like kind of showcasing these tiles that you can work towards and that you can get. Um, it requires a tiny bit of setup to get them up because they, they lay flat in the insert when they're in storage, but then you put them vertically when you're actually playing. Um, but it's just a really, really cool feature. And I just, I love the game. It's a wonderful game in the Hall of the Mountain King. And finally, number one, it's one that, that no one mentioned at the back end of his list, but I really love, particularly with two or three players, I really love Parks. And the insert in Parks is beautiful. They go with a smaller box, smaller environmental impact, which is on theme with the game. It means they can ship more at a lower cost, um, takes up less space in a, in a suitcase, but it still has great shelf presence. And the everything works because of this insert system. So the inserts are here, beautiful, two beautiful inserts on the top layer. They're resource inserts, so you just hand one to one side of the table, hold, give one to the other side of the table. The board fits perfectly in this little slot in the middle of the, of the box. Pull the board out, and everything else is, is stored perfectly here. And even, I could go down even deeper, I'm not going to do that because things are going to start to shift around. But there's even like deeper stuff hidden under here. I like how he, he makes the cards easy to pick up. Yeah, there, there's stuff under here too. So if you pick up the cards, there's there's more stuff underneath the cards. Just layer upon layer upon layer of stuff all fit in this tiny, concise box. Now, I do want to mention, and in parts, I, the reason I love the game is I, it's a very soothing game. I call it a very pleasant game. Um, it, but it has this one-way action track mechanism that I really, really like. I, I like looking ahead of the track and saying, okay, I can jump ahead and choose that awesome action, or I can go slowly and choose actions one at a time. It's just one of my favorite mechanisms. Uh, the 
the one caveat I want to mention about, about game trays and inserts in general is the difficulty they can cause if you have expansions. And so if you have an expansion of parks, everything is so tightly designed to fit in here, an expansion is just not going to fit. And I, I should probably have checked out the, the, the uh, expansion Kickstarter to see what they did. But I imagine they just essentially asked you to keep stuff in another box because it doesn't fit. And so that's the give and take here. And personally, I, I like when an insert is so well designed as it is in, in parks uh, because they didn't know when they published parks if they were going to have an expansion. They don't know. And if they are going to make an expansion, it's going to come in a box anyway, so they, they could put another insert in that box. There are times where it works out, like with My Little Scythe or, or Between Two Castles, where you just happen to have extra room in the box for another insert that you can add in. But then you end up, as we did, designing the expansion around the insert itself, which has its limitations. Like, it can be good. It can be good to have constraints in game design. But when you're designing around an insert, that really isn't the best design constraint to work around for game design. You're not necessarily creating the best expansion uh, if, if you were designing around that constraint. Hopefully we still did that for My Little Scythe and for Between Two Castles. But that's just something that I think to keep in mind, both as, as designers watching this and as gamers watching this. I know it's nice to keep everything inside one game box, but you kind of have to choose or maybe think about the, the sacrifices that the designer and the publisher is making um, if they are choosing either to have everything fit really nice in the game box or to have a box big enough and modular enough to fit expansions that they don't even know will exist yet. So it's always a give and take between those two things. Uh, but overall, I love the game tray system. Uh, I love how easy it makes setup and cleanup and organizing the components and games like Dwellings of Elder Vale, where you actually use the insert trays throughout the game. I think that's really, really clever. And I look forward to seeing more clever creations from Noah. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What is your favorite game trays insert or tray? Um, and what is your favorite game that just happens to have a game tray in it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks.